everybody, my name's Kelly, this is Sandra. We are educators here at the Kansas City Zoo and we are outside our tropics building. We're gonna go exploring with Blossom, our wagon riding chicken, and see what we can find inside today. If you didn't know it, our tropics building was the original building here at the zoo when the zoo opened in 1909. So uh, it's pretty fun to go in and check that all out. So you ready Blossom? All right, here we go. You're going to go backwards. One of the things I just love about our tropics building and the exhibits in here are there are several different species in each one, Sandra, aren't there? I mean, we've got to look up, you got to look down, and you can find, find friends everywhere. And there's even some friends that are hidden in here. There are some friends that like to hide. Very good camouflage. Well, one of our hiders is, is right, not hiders, is right here up front checking, <laughs> yes. checking everything out. So very interested in, in um, blossom here. Yeah. So this is one of our blue monkeys, and we know it's a monkey because monkeys have tails. So this is one of our, our our monkeys here who's very curious about our our friend who's visiting. Now our our blue monkey, this one. Um, you see that big long tail and different tails are used for different things. So our monkey here, our blue monkey, uses their tails for balance. Right. So they primarily spend their time up in the trees, um, unless there's a chicken visiting. But that, that <laughs> tail helps give them balance and keeps them from, from falling out of the trees. Awesome is totally facing the wrong direction to see any friends. So I'm going to move over this way and see if we can get them to see each other. Kelly, something I think is very interesting here is that our monkey friends are social animals. They and are. what that means is that they like to be around other animals just like them. So we have a bunch of, of monkeys right here that are together yep. um, because they like to socially uh, interact with each other. That is and that's part of, of who they are, um, is that social interaction, it, a lot like humans. It is. And, you know, they don't, don't tweet or Facebook, but in order to show each other how much they like each other, they'll do a lot of things together, like grooming. So quite often you'll see monkeys and even apes, they will be picking through each other's fur um, and making sure that everybody is well groomed. So they look nice and don't have bugs or other things caught in their fur. Right, right. And a lot of times they like to sit very close to each other, almost like snuggling. They do. They do. They are not social distancers. <laughs> no, they are not good at the social distancing. We have some other friends um, right across from us, and that's our gibbons. And again, they are um, very social animals as well. Uh, and this one is very, very special because our, our mom, our uh, very blonde um, gibbon here, is holding a baby up next to her. Yeah, so in, in this species, you can tell the males from the females by their colors when they're adults. So our male, it, Mr. Smithers, it has the black fur with the white cheeks, and Kit, our adult female, has the blonde fur. And she's, again, got that baby holding up close to her, and all of those babies are that blonde color when they're born, so they can stay nice and close to mom and, and hidden from any predators that, that may be about. Right. And as the baby matures, if it is a male, um, it will get that dark color. Right. Um, they, uh, they both turn that dark color and then at, at, uh, when, when the female is old enough to become a mom at that sexual maturity, then, the, then she will turn back to that blonde. Right. So. Go back to the, yeah. the lighter so color. The whole family, look at that nice 
family portrait. Very great, yes, a yeah. great family portrait. I bet we'll get to see them again when we go around on the other side of the building. So I bet we'll we will. just keep them wondering what we're doing. <laughs> So back here in our, our, our back exhibit, we have another group of, of assorted animals. So we have some more monkeys here. These are called white-faced sake monkeys. And we have several of them. The ones that have all white fur on their faces, those are the males. So we have more <laughs> males and females. And our female, she does not have that white face. But they're definitely going to be curious about, about our chicken and, and coming to visit. And in the background, so our monkeys are up high. In the background of this one, we need to look a little bit lower. And we have our capybara. So yeah, so Blossom still hasn't turned around to see yeah. um, what is in the far background. But I think if she were to turn around now, she would see something that looks maybe a little bit like her. Yeah. And that's our crested screamer. I'm going to spin her around and see. Oh. oh, are you going to look? So, yep, this is our, our crested screamer. His name is Louie, and he is demonstrating why he is called a screamer. They do not have what one would call a beautiful call, um, but they are very loud, so they can send that, project that voice through the, through the rainforest that they live in. Now, strangely enough, most people don't know that screamers are also waterfowl, so they are related to ducks and geese and swans, so they are, they are um, another, another bird that, that is water loving. Um, however, they don't have the webbed feet like, like those other waterfowl have. Right. And they also have these amazing bony spurs on their wings that they can use to defend themselves. So between that scream and those, those bony spurs, uh, I don't think anybody's going to mess with a, with a screamer too much. <laughs> Very interested. <laughs> so Louie's got that tuft of feathers on top of his head that's yes. standing up, that's showing maybe some interest or yes, some, I, some caution. Yeah, I, I've seen him before where he has been upset and he's not acting totally upset with having Blossom come to visit. She is a very pretty girl, so. She is. We, we, may, have, we may have met some, made some friends here today. <laughs> well, let's move on down and see if we can see that capybara a little bit. And then we have one more friend in here we can try to find. It's another tree dwelling friend. So I think, I think something that's really interesting, we've been talking about the monkeys and their tails yeah. um, are, and how they use that tail for balance. Mm -hmm. We actually have another friend that we're going to find up in the, um, on a branch up here mm -hmm. that has a tail. But this isn't a monkey, is it, Kelly? It is not a monkey. And this is called a prehensile tail porcupine. So if you look at that tail, it's very strong and muscular. They can use that to hold on, to hang on to branches. Because this is a nocturnal animal. They're going to sleep all day in, in, in a tree, the crook of a tree, or maybe a hollow. Um, but they would want to hold on so they don't fall out of that tree. Um, and they use their tails to do that. So that, those tails are called prehensile. Yes. Ones that can hold on real tight. And our, our porcupine is showing um, that prehensile yeah. with that curly that cue curly on his cue. tail. Yeah, he's not necessarily holding on really tight, but he's got that curly cue that he can grab on if he needs if to he needs at some to. point. And something that he has in common with that capybara are they are both rodents. The capybara is the largest rodent in, in the world, but uh, they are both rodents. So it's kind of, kind of a fun little fact that they share with each other. Another fun fact about the capybara that's hiding back in the back there mm -hmm. is that um, it is a water animal. He has webbing between his toes and he is able to swim. Uh, that's why he has the, the big pool of water here that he can get into and swim around. Yeah. Yep, you'll notice their eyes and their nose is kind of on top of their head so that when they're in that water they can still see and breathe. 
um, yes. much like a hippopotamus or a crocodile. Right. I think that, that Louis is quite interested in Blossom here. Yeah. Those, those feathers on top of his head are still raised up. Yeah. So he's got the plume of feathers and so does Blossom. Yes. I wonder who else we have yeah. over on this side. And I think our, our Gibbons have been kind of following us all the way around trying they to have. see what we're doing. Oh, we've got one on each side and up close to our mama. And, and baby. Oh. Kit hasn't had too many people to show off that new baby to lately, so she's right, right down here letting us all check it out. Because what new mom doesn't want everybody to see their beautiful baby, right? <laughs> and it's amazing to me that those babies from birth can hold on. Um, Gibbons are arboreal, so they spend their whole, whole life pretty much up in the trees. They swing from branch to branch, and if baby wants to stay with mama, baby's got to hold on, because if you're doing that brachy eating and swinging from your arms, you can't hold a baby, too. So baby's got to do their part. So I think she looks like a little fanny pack on there. <laughs> she does look like a little fanny pack. <laughs> That's her own little fanny pack. Oh, well, yep. Now, something to, uh, to point out over here is that we're uh, looking at our monkeys. Our monkeys over in the other exhibits have right. had um, tails. These guys don't have tails, so these are part of our ape family. They are. So they, they look a lot like our monkeys, but there's no tails. Yeah. Yep, and, and apes tend to be a little bit larger. Um, these are lesser apes, so they're the smaller, smaller of the apes. Um, but uh, Gibbons and Simons and um, um, and then our, our great apes are all going to have, have no tail. So. Correct, yes. Yeah. And there is another family that we have to look we at, to at while we're here. Yeah. Um, and it's and one that, is, that you can check out at home anytime is our, is our otter family. So uh, you can't go wrong with them and their adorableness. So we do have mom and dad. And then they currently have five of their babies still residing with them. They were all born in 2018. Uh -huh. So twins were born in March of 2018 and triplets in November of 2018. Um, so it's quite the family of, of otters, um, always on the move. So you can check them out anytime you want on our website. We have a cam set up so you can see what they're up to yes. any time of the day. Yes. And I love this exhibit because our apes can go over the top to either side and then our otters can swim under and, and explore and enjoy both sides. And everybody seems to be getting along just fine, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so lots of babies here in our, in our traffics building. We can go up here and see if some of our tiniest ones are they are the tiniest are going to be visible but a lot like blossom they've got plumes on top they of their heads, have too. Poofy heads too but they're not birds they mm -hmm. are mammals they are mammals yeah we'll see who's these are our cotton top tamarins so we have mom and dad and then we have some some uh, babies that were born in a fall, I think it was November, October or November um, of 2019. So they are curious, but they are also very cautious. And I sort of think they look like Albert Einstein. So. They, they do look like, <laughs> at least they, they have the same kind of hair. Uh, these are uh, tamarins that are, that are found natively in South America in the, in the rainforests. And so they're pretty amazing little little creatures. And again, they fall under monkeys because they have those tails. Right, and that tail again is used for balance. Yes. These, these can do lots of leaps and jumps from branch to branch, which is definitely fun to watch. They are, look, they definitely look confused. So we'll move <laughs> on and we'll make our last stop right up here at up front. So this is one of those exhibits that 
um, may have some um, animals that are hiding. Yes. And we have animals up high and animals down low. So yeah, up high, cool. we have our um, von, uh, von der Decker hornbills. Mm -hmm. The Hanging male has out. that, that reddish, orangish beak, and the female has the dark colored beak. So um, you can tell the males from females. Right. Right. And we have several species of hornbills here at the zoo. These are the smallest ones we have. But just like our rhinoceros ones, when, when we have a breeding pair, the female will go into a nest cavity and get walled in by the male. So they can protect their eggs um, when that happens. So it's kind of a neat thing that they do um, to, to help make sure those, those eggs hatch and those babies stay safe. Right. right. And then, is there something down in the water, Sandra? There is something down in the kind water. Of being really good and visible to see. Right, morning, so. right. So normally people don't even realize that we have a freshwater stingray um, in our pond here. Uh, so it is uh, moving around uh, quite nicely this morning, but when it sits still, it blends into the rocks. So great natural camouflage um, with this, this wonderful uh, freshwater stingray. So right now it's kind of hanging out um, in the back. It moved itself down the wall and is now just kind of waiting and sitting nice and still yeah. for ca that camouflage purpose. Yeah, and I, we've had this freshwater stingray longer than we've had our, our stingrays over at Stingray Bay. Um, so I always think of this one as our original, but um, we are we love having this one because it's a really kind of a good hide and seek animal. So showing off that camouflage. Right. So um, I think we've had um, fun here in, in the Tropics building yeah, today. Lots the of original building here at the Kansas City Zoo. Correct. Uh, we've, we've seen a lot of animals. We have, and they've been uh, enjoying, I think, having some company come and visit them. So just like us, uh, people who work here at the zoo, the animals are also missing all of our friends that come and visit us. And so we're looking forward to when we can reopen and have you all back. So thank you so much for uh, joining us and watching, and we'll see you again here at the Kansas City Zoo. Make sure you're social distancing, washing those hands, and we're excited to see you back out soon.